people need to understand that it's a dialect just like how garfield speaks jamaican i'm a, this is a dialect of english so you need to understand that so the hebrew and by the way to whoever wrote those hebrew writings was smarter than anybody we have ever met in our life why you say that because when i'm studying the writing and they have what's called uh SVO, sub, subject, no, we have in English subject, verb, object. They have verb, subject, object. They switch it around. So that means their writing style and how they, they have idioms. They have idioms, family. They have metaphors. They have epith epithets. Epithets is like... But let's take it. This is the beginning of a parable. The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed upon the ground. This is one of his parables. This very same parable is found in the book of Matthew. In Matthew it says, Another parable set he before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven, Malkut HaShemayim, is like unto a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. In Luke, the same verse reads, He said therefore unto what is the kingdom of God like, and whereunto shall I liken it? It is also like unto a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and cast into his own garden. It's the same parable, one parable, but recorded by two individuals. However, the difference is, is that Matthew records it as the kingdom of heaven, whereas Mark, or Luke, is recording it as the kingdom of God. Why the difference? Because for one thing, we know that Matthew was written to the Hebrews, to the Jewish people. And in Judaism, do you say Elohim? Yes, you do. But let's go back 2,000 years, they did not. Just like the name Yahweh, do Jews pronounce the name Yahweh? No, what do they say instead? Hashem. They did the same thing with Elohim. They would not say Elohim. They would use a euphemism. Adonai is a euphemism of the name Yahweh. One of the euphemisms used in the first century by the Jews is the word Shemayim, heaven. So Mark, or Luke, excuse me, is probably giving his letter to people who don't really understand Hebraic thought very well. So he has to take what Yeshua said, because Yeshua was speaking in a Hebrew, he, he said, kingdom of heaven. He used the euphemism. But Mark, knowing that his readers aren't going to understand that, he translates the euphemism into what he meant, the kingdom of God. So how many of you heard that the kingdom of heaven is a place? It's not. It's the kingdom of God. It's the kingdom of a person, not a place. But the point here is, is that Luke... In the Greek text, we see that he is writing possibly or maybe originally in Greek, although I doubt it, but it's possible. But he's reading to people who aren't familiar with Hebraic thought. But Matthew is definitely writing to Hebrew people in Hebrew. They have epithets. They have idioms. Who does that if you're not intelligent? I know that, but I'm just saying. They had some sort of numerology in there. When you see Zion going into the whole gematria stuff, that's later on. But they did have some sort of gematria in, in numeric, alphanumeric thing going. I'm, I'm, I'm saying this to everybody who is in Kemet. We know how great Kemet is. But whoever wrote the text whoever wrote that bible is smart as a mother effer i'm telling you all that and i'm learning i'm taking my time and learning the language it's going to take me a while but when you look at the grammar the syntax family this is why hebrew is so hard you could read i could something that i grasped very well was the letters so i would see brothers write their name on on on, on you on facebook and i say oh that's your name pitney or whatever and they're like oh you know that you don't even know the, know the language yet because i could pick up on the words with even without the diacritic marks for some reason i picked up on that but again hebrew is from left to right we write from right to left so there's a lot of things with hebrew that is very difficult as learning anything medjineta is mad difficult too but at the end of the day, family, don't disrespect the Hebrew text. Because whoever wrote it, I know it ain't them brothers that around us. They, God, them dudes were super intelligent. Super intelligent. Matthew 3, 9. And do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. For those of you that have been learning Hebraic thought, Hebraic writings, and maybe learn a little bit of Hebrew, you've come across this idea of Hebrew poetry, Hebrew puns, parallelisms. These are common throughout the Tanakh. They're all over the place. The Hebrew likes to make word puns. For example, we would say, the artist painted the canvas. We would not say, the painter painted the painting. You don't hear us talk like that, do you? You know, we try and avoid those type of 
of, of sentences. But not Hebrew. Hebrew would continue it. The painter painted the painting. That's the, they love those word plays. They do it all the time. You find them throughout the Tanakh. Guess what if you take the Hebrew New Testament and translate it into Hebrew? Guess what you find? Word puns everywhere in the text. They're all over the place. This is one of them. One of many of them. Can't see it in the English. You can't see it in the, he- in the Greek. Only in the Hebrew. No, we have in English subject, verb, object. They have verb, subject, object. They switch it around. So that means their writing style and how they, they have idioms. They have idioms, family. They have metaphors. They have epith- epithets. Epithets is like, say, El is the God. So you'll have El Elyon. El Elyon would be a, probably, pro- probably, no, that's not a good example. But just different names of that same God would be an epithet of that God. They have epithets. They have idioms. Who does that if you're not intelligent?